Okay, we got the rocker arms back on. Now we got to take this cover off for timing. That's our four bolts on our flywheel cover. It'd be nice if we could spin this table so that we could see the what I'm doing. Okay, so we took the, the cover off. There was four bolts. And now what we have to do is we have to find top dead center, which is going to be around um, around this point where that's hitting the green magnet. On the compression stroke. But while we're in here, if you get me a feeler gauge, let's check the coil gap. The coil gap is the gap right here from the flywheel from the flywheel magnet to the coil. And I'm only checking this because it looks big to me. Max 35 thousandths cap. which this side is out of spec. DQ number two? DQ number two. This side, I can get the feeler gauge through both legs of that coil gap. And in the manual, it says that it can't pass through both legs, doesn't it? Yep. Okay, so this side is up pretty high. And this side is really perfect. So, I don't know what happened there, but technically, you're higher than 35 thousandths, you're not allowed to be. That would be DQ number two. <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to take the fan off and the starter cuffs and the nut. It's a 19 millimeter. Usually your standard impact will take that nut off. And we don't want to just, the, the, right now the flywheel is locked onto the engine. Now we're putting the degree wheel on, but I'm not going to tighten the degree wheel until I get the pointer onto the engine. Now like your regular car, this does not have a pointer on it. Like your regular car, I don't know about new cars because I don't work on them, but old cars um, have a pointer and it has a mark on the flywheel and you can put your timing light on there. Since this doesn't have that, we have to create, we have to create that whole operation with a pointer. And I like to use a stiff wire so that it can't shake around. And I like to make the point as pointy as I can so that I can read it accurately. Very 
it tight. So again, if you're following along at home, we're on page seven in the manual, and this is uh, timing inspection. Procedure for checking ignition timing. So page six, going on to page seven. So the heading says Honda UT3 junior, senior, and heavy classes. I'm not sure why rookie isn't in here, but it would be the same procedure for rookie. That was kind of left out, I'm not sure why. So again, the rule is to, the new rule is to spin between 1200 and 2000 RPM, which that's gonna give you one degree of variance right there. And all timing must meet 20 degrees and never exceed 20.5. So with them putting the word must meet 20 degrees, anything below 20 degrees is not legal and anything over 20.5 is not legal. Yep. Um, and we, we just measured the air gap. The air gap, you know, is supposed to be at 0 0.035 for the timing check. It can be below that. Uh, le legally, you can be below 0 0.035. You just can't be above 35. But for this test, they're calling out that the gap must be 35,000. So if you're below that, you should point out to the tech director, hey, you got to move that to 35 thousandths. Okay, and then we have our DeWalt drill. Do we have our tachometer hooked up? No. Okay, I like, I had this tachometer with a metal lead on it that I can clip right on the spark plug wire. Now, was this the plug that was in it? We have our strap style no, plug. We, we put a strap style plug on there it doesn't, there was a big debate about the strap style plug versus the brisk plug. Oh, armor standing in front of it. Where's your brisk plug go? The brisk plug is a different style plug and it's going to give you a slightly hotter spark. So they said, so they, all the tech directors I've ever talked to go, oh no, you're supposed to use the strap style plug. But we're all running this brisk plug, so why isn't it in the rules to start with a strap style plug? But um, we're just going to start with this plug and then we're going to show you that it makes a difference with this plug. But the rule does not state what spark plug to use. So, and I don't want to assume anything in the manual because, you know, I guess we'd have to call you sec on that one. And again, we're using the larger degree wheel to get a more accurate measurement. We're using a stiff pointer that doesn't jiggle around so we get an accurate measurement. Because once you start spinning this, everything will rattle off the table, especially at 2000 RPM. Okay, now we have our piston stop. What our piston stop basically does is, get me a piston on there. We're trying to find top dead center on the wheel, which is zero. And what the piston stop is doing is it's screwing into that hole until it hits the piston. Okay, and then it's going to give us a reading on the wheel. Then we're going to go down and around and come back up the other side and hit the piston stop and it's going to give us a reading on the wheel. Those readings should be equal amounts from this side to this side. And it will take us some adjusting to get that, and that will be our true zero, which is top dead center. Because you're making up for slop in the, in the um, piston pin, and you're making up for slop in the rod to the crank. So that's why it's important that the piston stop is in there because it takes all that slop out of everything. So I like to back this up 50, 60, 70 before I turn in my piston stop. And I'm doing this on the fly, so sometimes I'm rusty. 
Now I'm going to spin it. And we're not deep enough. You're spinning on here. Oh. <clears throat> you got to tighten the degree, will you? I messed this stuff because I'm human. So I'm going to unscrew that. I'm going to get that, the green magnet lined up. I never lock down the degree wheel because I don't do this every single day. And at the track, it's even worse. So you don't have to go crazy. Just lock it down with the with a little zip zap. Okay, so on this side of the wheel, it's hitting at at 26. Now we're going to go all the way down and around. And we're hitting at 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So 19 from 26. Is seven, so we're off seven degrees. So we're gonna one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're gonna go to 23 on this side, and that should get us closer. You can bend the tab too. There's like 18 ways to skin this cat. I like to make sure it's perfect. So that's 23 on that side. <coughs> One, two, three, and that's 23 on that side, if you can see the pointer. I'm locking down the pointer. I need a pair of regular pliers. <clears throat> While the pointer is very sharp, it's kind of tipped at an angle, so I want to straighten that out so that it's directly. Twenty-three on that side. I'm gonna go back to the other side. And it's twenty-three. One, two, three. So that's exactly top dead center because you're going twenty-three on this side. I'll try and slow down and show you again because it's a it's a, a lot of steps and when you're at the track and all these people are around, it can get confusing. So I'll put a mark on the wheel at 23. Here's top dead center. This is zero right here, okay? But if I go to here on this side, and then I go to there on that side, that's zero. One, two, three. So we're 23 and 23, which is zero. 
because once we, the piston stop is hitting the top of the piston at 23 on one side of the stroke and 23 on the other side of the stroke. So that's technically zero. We have our pointer, which is saying it's zero. Now we can take out our piston stop. You do not want to spin the engine with the piston stop in there. Though I've had it happen, it just hits the end of the piston stop. It'll dent the piston. Okay, now we want to take our timing light. It has a little arrow on the end. And we want that arrow facing the spark plug. And then the spark plug has to ground on the engine. So I usually tuck it in behind something so that the spark plug grounds. Because if the spark plug's out here just dangling out around, it's not going to ground and we're not going to get a reading. our DeWalt drill. Again, this is a DWD 520. This is actually a hammer drill and it has two speeds. The first speed I know because I've used this is 1200 RPM. The second speed is much faster. I don't recall, I think it's 3,000, but we're going to check it at 1,200 first. We have our little tachometer hooked up to the wire so that we can see the RPM. Now I'm going to need three hands. Okay, now look at the tack. As we spin it, we can spin it faster. It probably max out at, what, 1,200? Yep, just about. Now we're going to hit the light. That motor is at 27 degrees of timing. That. DQ number three. DQ number three. Oh my God, 27 degrees. Okay, so when I get when I get something like that, I'm like, it's supposed to be at 20. So then I say to myself, all right, it can't be that far out, can it? So now we're going to recheck zero on the degree wheel. I swear we've never taken this engine apart. Somebody dropped it by. So we're screwing the piston stop back in. Twenty three and twenty three. So that is zero. Yeah, we're going to try it one more time. Okay, film 1200 on that. Then we're going to show you on here. Okay, now oh, yeah, see we don't have that battery. So right there, you can clearly see that it's 27. Is it 27.7?
27 right on the button? Well, because we want to do it. Spin Pretty it close. Let me do it one more we time. We want to spin it at 2,000 and see what it says. It's 27.25. It's, it's just above. And if I can explain that to you. Okay, 27. We need something to wipe the marks off the wheel. See that carb cleaner stuff works better. Oh, that got it. Yeah. Maybe that wasn't wet enough. Okay, now I lost my train of thought. Twenty-seven and a quarter. Yeah, twenty-seven and a quarter. Okay, so twenty-seven is right there. If you can zoom in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's 27 right there. That's seven degrees more than where this engine should be. Now, <clears throat> you can see by the pointer, it's real easy to just move this a little bit, and now you're off a half a degree. So it's really got to be an accurate measurement of the timing to get it right on the mark and i believe that's why they're giving you the half a degree but with a big wheel and a pointer there's no disputing this is at 27. 0 .25. 0 .25. now what i want to show you is if we turn this drill to the number two setting Which you would already be DQ'd and, you know, arguing with the tech director at this point. I like to spin it slow first because it'll, it'll rip the wheel out of your hand. So drill out of your hand. I need another hand. It's like a three-handed project here. And you start spinning it that fast. So now it's at 28. What RPM was it? I didn't look. Let's look. Now they say 2,000. 2180. It's really hard to hold this at 2,000. And it's 27 and almost 28 at 2,000. But as you can see, the faster we spin the engine, the more it's going to advance the timing. Now we're going to take this spark plug out and put the brisk one in. The higher the RPM, the more timing. So if you spin this at 6,000 RPM, the timing will be even higher. So I don't understand. The drill goes to 1,200 RPM. Why can't we just check the timing at 1200 RPM? You only need one RPM, but they say 12 to 2000. Well, that's a lot of gray area putting that 2000 in there because it's hard to hold the drill at 2000. And most any electric drill that you find will not be full trigger 2000. This one's 1200 and I don't know, we'd have to spin it again to know the max on the other speed. So again, why not write the rule 1200 RPM and pick your degree of timing if you want a 20 or 20 and a half. But this monkey business of going to this half, half degrees and 2000 RPM, 
That's just to muddy the waters, but this, this engine's clearly out, so we're not debating that. So now it almost is past 28. Before, it was 27 and 3 quarters. So we picked up 0.25 just by the start point. One start point. Okay, now let's try and slow it down. And that's about a half a degree right there. And it's so hard to hold this at 2,000. And then look at the thing and then look back at that. It's like you can see, we have three people here just to check timing. So the brisk plug is worth 0.25 in timing at least. Right, and that's why you're all running this brisk plug. And the brisk plug sparks from the end of here to the electrode, and it's a hotter burning plug. Okay, does that, do we have any questions on timing? Um, they just agree and why don't they have a specification of the RPM? Right. So I just want to reiterate the rules on timing just so that we're all on the same page because this was just updated and I find it utterly ridiculous that we talk about this. It's been on the internet four times, okay? And it's pretty easy. It says between 1200 and 2000 RPM. Well, we just clearly pointed out that 2000 RPM is pretty hard to hold the drill and get it it bounces from 19 to 21, it's hard. But the 1200 number, that's easy to get. You just full trigger the drill, it goes to 1200, we check the timing, we're all done. So they're giving you a range of 20 degrees, never exceed 20.5. Well, the thing is, man, I'm an engine builder, I want 20.5. That 0.5 degrees, in my mind is worth something, so I want it. So now I have to try and hold it at 20 to, at 2000, which is hard. It says any RPM below 1200 and above 2000 is not following the proper timing check procedure. Well, okay, whoever wrote this manual, come and show us how to hold this at exactly 2000 RPM or call out a drill that spins at 2,000 RPM. Now I've been at all these tracks across the country, okay, and nobody has a drill that spins at 2,000 RPM. Half the time they don't even have tech tools. And furthermore, the governing body should have a, a toolbox spelled out with all the tech tools in it, and each club should be mandatory, have to buy the tech tools, or be slight, be, um, required to buy the tech tools or the governing body should supply the tech tools to all these clubs and then we'd all be using the same tools and there wouldn't be any variance there with the same procedure with the same procedure now it says maximum coil leg to flywheel air gap is 35 okay we already checked that these rules have so much gray area and it's ridiculous because if I was in tech and I was watching you do this, I'd be like, no, you didn't get that at a solid 2,000. And then I'd be like, okay, you got to raise my coil gap to 35. It does not say as engine run. And it says drill capable of spinning 12 to 2,000 uh, RPM tachometer. We had degree wheel pointer and piston stop. We had all that. Accurate timing light, which is the timing light that they call out. And we just showed you that this engine was out of spec. Okay, let's pop the flywheel off and see what's in there. Bet you this thing was winning some races at 27 degrees. Already got a weight belt on it. It does? Mm-hmm. 
worry about it. I need a big screwdriver. So I like to put a screwdriver behind the flywheel and hold some pressure on it. Choose every time it's three wax. Okay, this is an example of the green magnet that's called out in the book. Sometimes they're dark green or this light green. So that's a totally legal flywheel. Now we're looking at the keyway. And it looks like the keyway is ground quite a bit but for the heck of it let's take it off and flip it around i think these come standard 25 degrees they do 124 so let's put it in the opposite way This slot on the keyway, let me explain that to the folks out there. This slot is machined in from the factory. Let's put it this way, Honda don't make no mistakes. I've taken so many of these apart, it's not even funny. And then Honda uses a straight key, which would look like that from the distance of here to the other edge. And then what you do is, since we're trying to take five degrees of timing out of this, we're cutting the key and putting a notch in it so that, that we can rock the flywheel one way or the other to get the desired timing. If these governing bodies would just leave it at 25 the way it comes, <coughs> it would be much easier to look at the key and go, Okay, this key's never been cut. I got one better. How about open timing? You can run whatever timing well, you want. Then we'd never have to check timing again. Yeah, and what John's saying is on an open timing rule, what that means is run any timing you want. Okay, we're all going to figure out that, hey, these engines like 30 degrees timing, and all of them will be 30 degrees. And then we don't ever have to do this again because timing isn't an issue. Um, and that would be called open, so, or non-tech. So we're going to put the key back in there. We're going to put the flywheel back on. Since the flywheel is tapered and the shaft is tapered, it locks the flywheel onto the engine. And then I like to line up this, this coil right in the middle. We're going to have to do the whole procedure to find zero again because we had it off. Give me the nut for the... Trying to stay out of the picture, but it's hard to work from the side. Okay, that's locked down. Now we're going to put our piston stop in and find zero again. You want the strap plug? No, that's just a left plug for now. No, there's for no this. plug in it. That's a Bristol nut. Okay. 
on that 20 on that side. Remember that, Jake. Yep. I'm at 25 on that side. So I'm going to move this to 22 and a half. Go crazy because I felt it. Yeah, just grab it again. I think it's a long ball. It's over back there. We need a longer bolt for our needle. This is why performing this at the racetrack at one o'clock in the morning can be frustrating because it's not a five second thing. Eight millimeters. Put that on a socket so I can run this down. Yeah. Here, right here, Jake. Do we have any millimeter? Twenty two and a half. Twenty two and a half. One, two and a half. Okay, so that's zero. When you do this a lot, it becomes real easy, but the first time you do it, it's uh it's a little confusing. So now what we did was we flipped the, the key around the other way and put the flywheel on. Are you spinning at 1200? At first. My golly, that's 20 and a half. 20 and a quarter. Now if we go, what's the RPM? 1,000? 700? 20 right there at 1,200. Can you see that? Yeah. Now we're going to try and hold that at 2,000. Because that was at 20. About a quarter of a degree, but well, again, man, I'm trying my hardest to keep this 
22, 22. Now 20. I mean, this is a task and a half here. 18, 20. And it's at the 20 and a half. So now this engine's legal, but it wasn't found that way. So DQ number three. Okay, we're going to clean up the bench. They're going to clean it up. And then we're going to move on to, what are we moving on to? Cylinder head? How about flywheel weight real quick? Before we cut out. All right, flywheel weight before we cut out. Minimum is, what's the minimum, guys? 1550 or something? 1550, I think. Do you want to bring this scale over here? Yeah. Now, if we jump to the flywheel rules, I don't, I don't have them up. Somebody, what's the flywheel page number? Twenty-three, James. Twenty-three. Okay, flywheel modifications are not permitted. All nylon blades on the cooling fan must be intact, which they were. They were all intact. Flywheel weight must be 1550 grams minimum. There's no maximum number, just a minimum number, which would lead you to believe that lighter is faster, but we all know, all know that's hocus pocus. Flywheel diameter, 6.285 minimum. Right. So, the we would need that big caliper in the red box. We'll come back to that. Okay, so they want us to measure across the flywheel. Do they give a width? No. There's no width. There's no width here, but it has to have the green magnet, and sometimes these are dark green. Um, they don't give us, they do not give us a width here. They only give us an overall width. Six point two eight one. The dimension in the book is what, John? Six point two eight five minimum. Well, that's on a harder edge. Huh? The outer edge is not the width. Okay, so six point three two nine on the bigger lip, and then the smaller lip. Is six two nine zero. Yeah, so it falls in spec. This is a, it's a good flywheel. We don't care about that anyway. I can look at it and tell that nobody's machined it. You know, lightning. This is not going to help you. I'm telling you right now. So now we're going to come over to the scale, and put it on the scale. Somebody asked if the timing for the UT two is different from the UT three. No, it's this, the timing for the UT2 and timing for UT3 is the same. We believe you. You'd have to check it in the manual. 
1692. Let me go over to my chart that I have. But somebody already measured this and it says 1686 on it. Yeah, that's light. Well, it's not that bad. 17. Uh, no, it's light. It's 192 grams above the minimum, right? No, the minimum's uh, 1550, so it's about 100 grams heavier than the minimum. James is looking for his notes right now on flywheels. Okay, so here's the, here's the interesting point I want to point out to you. This flywheel is 1723. So this flywheel is heavier than a 1692. That's why it's 175 bucks, okay? And then I've seen them as high as 1784. According to my notes, I track every flywheel that I take off and weigh. So there is 100 grams variance from one to the other, which what's gonna help you, it's gonna help you carry the momentum around the track. So this, so, ain't hor this ain't horrible. It's not the worst we've ever seen, but it's not the best we've ever seen. I mean, if I was building this motor, I'd put my 1723. This is the last one I have. You can't buy these aftermarket. They're not available yet. So the only way to get a heavier one is to buy five engines and eat the cost of five engines and take the heavier one. All right, I think uh, we can. I think we can move on now. Right. Okay, what are we moving on to? Let's take this out of here. Um, cylinder head, I believe. Carbon head. Uh, carburetor and head. Carburetor and head. 